Welcome to Too Fond of Books. My name is Janelle and this is another March Mystery Madness video. In today's video, I'm going to highlight one book by each of the Detection Club presidents. I talked about the Detection Club in an earlier video. We talked about some of the collaborations that the Detection Club put out. And so for this video, I thought it might be interesting to highlight one book by each of the presidents of the Detection Club. And But before we get into that, I need to give you the answer to yesterday's My March Mystery Madness Mindbender. The clue was, this 19th century Canadian detective uses science to solve mysteries. And the answer is Detective William Murdoch from the books by Maureen Jennings. Maureen Jennings is a Canadian author and she's written a number of the Murdoch mysteries, as we like to call them. This is a um, TV show cover uh, on the book. There's These are the actors from the, the TV show, which is very, very popular. And so, yeah, William Murdoch is a detective on the police force in Toronto in 1895 is when this first book of the series uh, came out, Except the Dying. And these are a great uh, detective series. So if you enjoy historical mystery, you might like to check out um, the Murdoch Mysteries by Maureen Jennings, Except the Dying is the first one in the series. Stay tuned to the end of the video for the next My March Mystery Madness Mindbender. So for now, let's get into the presidents of the Detection Club. The Detection Club is a club that started in London in, I think it formalized in maybe 1930, I think. And the very first president was G.K. Chesterton. He was the president from 1930 to 1936. And the book that I want to highlight of his is The Amazing Adventures of Father Brown. This came out in 1935. And what I thought would be interesting would be to see if I could find a book that the president wrote during their presidency, if at all possible. And if at all possible, I wanted to try and find a book that came out the year they became president. And in this case, I couldn't find one, but this book came out in 1935. 10 stories. Uh, in here, the Father Brown short, st uh, the Father Brown stories were all short stories. Ten of, and there's ten stories in this book, including the Blue Cross, the Eye of Apollo, and the Dagger with Wings. I love this edition. It's a Dell book edition, but it is an older edition. The back says, Agatha Christie says, always one of my favorite sleuths. One of the few figures in detection fiction who can be enjoyed whether you are a detective fan or not. Ellery Queen says, One of the few characters in all fiction who is likely to survive the fickle years. The New York Times says, He stands high among the very small list of really great detectives, and to read mystery stories which have the qualities of literature is of course a rich and rare treat. So G.K. Chesterton wrote the Father Brown series, and Father Brown is a Catholic priest who got himself involved in murder and mayhem. The next president of the Detection Club was E.C. Bentley, and he was the president from 1936 to 1949. And he did actually have a book come out the year he became president, and that was Trent's Own Case, 1936. Now, there is something very interesting here about the books that uh, E.C. Bentley wrote. He only wrote two books in this series, which might surprise you because the Trent series is very, very popular. He wrote Trent's Last Case in 1913. Martin Edwards calls it the catalyst for the Golden Age. And it was a groundbreaking book in 1913. So in Trent's last case, Sigsby Manderson was one of those fabulous beings who control the destiny of millions of their fellow men, not by force of arms or political power, but through the immense wealth they so ruthlessly exploit. His name was News, whatever he did. 
His death, sudden and violent, meant a scoop of the first magnitude, which must be followed up at once, as Sir James Malloy, editor of the record, instantly recognized. To establish why Manderson died, and, if possible, by whose hand, required qualities of a high order, powers of reportage and detection beyond the average. Like all good editors, Sir James had his man. Had his man. He knew that Trent, brilliant freelance reporter and investigator, was virtually finished with such assignments, but he also counted on the extraordinary circumstance of the case to lure Trent to the chase, and he did not count in vain. So far, so good. No murder case is easy to solve. Some take longer than others on account of the complexity of the circumstances, but here the circumstances seemed altogether lacking. It is true that there were many who would have killed Manderson if they could. He had enemies enough, but none of them could possibly have been near the scene of death when it occurred. Trent's explanation was ingenious and brilliant, but the record did not print it. Which is just as well, for the real explanation, when it came, was even more extraordinary. So it's called Trent's Last Case because Trent investigates and he comes up with this brilliant solution. He's so proud of himself. He lays it all out. And then it turns out that he is completely wrong. And so that's what's so unique and interesting about this book. This is a fantastic mystery story. So if you've never read Trent's Last Case, I can highly recommend it. And then in 1936, he came out with the second one, Trent's own case. So there was 23 years in between the first one and the second one. And by the second one, I don't know if E.C. Bentley had lost interest or what, but he ended up writing this one with H. Warner Allen. And in this book, Philip Trent returns. And this time, the erudite investigator and confidant of Scotland Yard finds himself in a most novel situation under suspicion for murder. Trent is amused by the clumsy attempts to frame him, but events take a shocking turn when his closest friend suddenly confesses. So, Trent's own case, E.C. Bentley, 1936. The next president of the Detection Club was Dorothy L. Sayers, and she was the president from 1949 until 1957. And she did not have a book that came out when she first became president in 1949. Dorothy L. Sayers was, is famous for her Lord Peter Whimsey series, and rightly so, they are fantastic. But I wanted to highlight a book that was not part of her, of her Lord Peter Whimsey series. And this is the documents in the case. She wrote this in 1930 with Robert Eustace. They co-authored this book. And it is um, a standalone. The grotesque grinning corpse in the Devonshire shack had died horribly with a dish of mushrooms at his side. It contained enough death-dealing muscarine to kill 30 persons. Why would an expert on fungi feast on a large quantity of this particularly poisonous species? The answer was hidden in a series of letters and documents that no one seemed to care about, except the dead man's son and a killer. So this book is basically mostly just doc it's full of just documents and that's how they chose to tell the mystery very interesting <clears throat> the next president of the detection club was agatha christie and she was the president from 1957 till night till 1976 so she had a very long run there she um she did not actually want to fully be president. She only agreed to be the president if there was someone else who would do the public speaking for her, which, which I find endearing, actually. So Lord Goral agreed to do the public speeches for her, uh, only under the condition that he be named co-president. So Lord Goral was co-president with her from 1957 until he died in 1963. He wrote 14 books. The most famous 
in the night in 1917 the last book that he wrote was murder at manor house in 1954 and i don't have any books to show by from lord goral but in 1957 the year agatha christie became the next president of the detection club she came out with 450 from paddington or what mrs mcgillicuddy saw i love this book this is from the miss marple series and this is a very entertaining addition in the Miss Marple series. The 450 from Paddington was quite the most convenient train home for the elderly Mrs. McGillicuddy, but what she saw from her carriage window was like a nightmare. In the train running parallel to hers, a woman was being murdered, strangled, as Mrs. McGillicuddy watched helplessly, but there was no body to be found. To be found and no one believed her story. No one except Miss Marple. I'm going to read you this brief uh, part uh, from when Mrs. McGillicuddy arrives at Miss Marple's house. The driver deposited the cases inside as the door was opened by an elderly maid. Mrs. McGillicuddy passed straight through the hall to where, at the open sitting room door, her hostess awaited her, an elderly, frail, old lady. Elspeth! Jane! They kissed, and without preamble or circumlocution, circumlocate, circum... <laughs> I can't say that word. Cir circumlocution, Mrs. McGillicuddy burst into speech. Oh, Jane, she wailed. I've just seen a murder. So, 450 from Paddington by Agatha Christie. The next president of the detection club was Julian Simmons and he was the president from 1976 to 1985. He did publish a book in 1976 but it wasn't a mystery it was a history book. Uh, so the closest I could find was the Black Heath Poisonings from 1978. I don't have a copy of it to show you I'm sorry. It's a Victorian murder mystery. Julian Simmons wrote a lot of of books, uh, a lot of mysteries, and I think this is one of the only ones that was a historical mystery, and so it was published in 1978, but it's set during, during Victorian uh, times in England. The Collard and Vandervelt families have shared a large estate in an elegant London suburb for decades. Family members fall victim to gastric misadventure. I love that phrase. <laughs> And so you have the Blackheath poisonings. The next president of the detection club was H.R.F. Keating and he was the president from 1985 to 2000. The book that came out in 1985 and I couldn't find a copy of it was Mrs. Craig's Crimes Cleaned Up. She is a char lady who combines sleuthing and cleaning. Her Watson the witching genteel Mrs. Milhorn. And so I was able to find this book, The Hard Detective, and this came out in 2000, the last year that he was president of the Detection Club. This is the first in the Harriet Martins series, although I think it was a pretty short series. Detective Chief Inspector Harriet Martins has earned the nickname The Hard Detective but she's had to be unyielding to make it in a man's world. It was, after all, this toughness that inspired her successful Stop the Rot campaign that has so provoked local criminals. But now, two of her officers have died within hours of each other. Harriet comes to believe both have been murdered, and a disturbing idea follows. For the circumstances of each death echo words from the book of Exodus, life for life, eye for eye. Has a killer chosen this gruesome ritual to tell Harriet she has been pushing too hard? And if so, can she prevent the six deaths that will surely complete the quotation, beginning with tooth for tooth? The next president of the detection club is was Simon Brett, and he was the president from 2000 to 2015. And I was able to get a hold of a copy of the book that he that came out the year he became president, and that is The Body on the Beach, the first in the Feathering 
Feathering Village Mysteries. In this book, Carol Seedon finds a body on the beach, but it has disappeared by the time the police arrive. Again, Simon Brett has written lots and lots of books. He has a plenty of series um, and so this is the first in the Feathering Village Mysteries. Carol Seedon is recently retired from the home office and living in the overdeveloped res residential hamlet of Feathering. Residing in the cottage she purchased with her ex-husband, she maintains a quiet and sensible life with the companionship of Gulliver, her Labrador retriever. She doesn't have the time or the tolerance to deal with her new bohemian neighbor, Jude, whose outgoing personality contrasts with that of the prim and proper Carol. But her new neighbor doesn't seem so bad when Carol discovers another addition to the neighborhood, a dead body. She finds it on the beach while taking Gulliver for his daily constitutional and notices that the corpse has two wounds on its neck. But later, the police are unable to find the body and dismiss Carol as a somewhat befuddled, middle-aged woman. She almost starts to believe it herself until a stranger threatens her to keep quiet or else. Unable to contain her anxiety, Carol does the unthinkable and confides what happens to Jude, who suggests that if the police cannot be bothered to catch a killer, then they should do it themselves. The body on the beach. Now, interesting, there are some connections to Agatha Christie's 450 from Paddington. This is the book that came out when she first became president, and it is about a woman that the police do not believe found a body or saw a murder, and so her, Jane Marple, has to investigate herself. The Body on the Beach, which is the book that Simon Brett wrote that came out the year that he became president, also is about a woman that the police do not believe found a body. I love the description in here, the somewhat befuddled middle-aged woman the police dismiss because they do not find a body. Interesting. And then, the current president of the Detection Club is Martin Edwards. He became president in 2015, and the seventh book in his, the, in his Lake District Mysteries came out the same year, and it's called The Dungeon House. These are a series of books about Hannah Scarlett, who runs a cold case team, and her partner, although he's not her partner through the entire series, uh, historian Daniel Kind. Daniel Kind is a character through the whole series, um, but by this time, by this book, they are, they are now partners. I've read this series and quite enjoyed them. They're, they're a good series set in the Lake District. The, the magnificent dungeon house and gardens overlook Cumbria's remote western coast with its mix of beaches, dunes, and fells, Roman ruins, and nuclear plant. Twenty years ago, the wealthy Whiteleys called it home, but not a happy one. Malcolm Whiteley had begun to disintegrate under financial and emotional pressures. He suspected various men in their social circle of being his wife's lover. After a disastrous party for the neighbors, Lizette told Malcolm their marriage was over. Sadly, an old Winchester rifle he had been hiding was at hand. Fast forward to today. Hannah Scarlett's cold case team is looking into the three-year-old disappearance of Lily Elston, whose father, Gray, had been Malcolm's accountant. The investigation coincides with yet another disappearance of a teenage girl, Shona Whiteley, daughter of Malcolm's nephew, Nigel, who now lives in the dungeon house despite its tragic history. As Hannah's team digs down into the past, doubts arise about what really happened the night Malcolm killed his wife and 16-year-old daughter, Amber, then himself. The Dungeon House. So, those are the presidents of the Detection Club, and that is a, one of the books um, from each president. And so I thought that would just be a fun way to talk about the presidents and highlight one of their books. So before I go, I need to give you the next clue for My March Mystery Madness Mindbender, and it is, this minor character eats apples and interacts with both Hercule Poirot and Parker Pine. 
So put your answer in the comment section down below. Also, let me know, have you read any books by any of these um, presidents of the Detection Club? Do you have favorites? Do you tend to prefer the books by the earlier president? Maybe you have a preference for that golden age of mystery um, and detection fiction. Or maybe you prefer some of the stuff by the newer presidents and you prefer the uh, more modern take on the mystery novel. Let me know down in the comments below and I'll see you again tomorrow for another March Mystery Madness video. Bye.